guys sorry to interrupt your video just a quick plea subscribe to my channel please if you haven't done it already subscribe tell your friends subscribe thanks hi guys okay I've been having a look around trying to find videos that help you with your road signs you know with the UK theory test um, and I've had a dig and there are some very good ones but they're all a bit lacking and there's some you know some videos only four minutes long how the hell are you gonna learn anything in four minutes right so I have been doing a PowerPoint presentation going through all of the questions going through theory test pro looking at the questions that they come up with there looking in the highway code looking in the knowing your um, road signs book the traffic signs this one going through this one driving the essential skills so on and so forth and I've been basically finding questions that are coming up and trying to find the answers for you and giving you the knowledge so not just for the theory test but for driving in life generally you've got to know these things so I've investigated I found stuff that's not even in the books to help you along the way now this is going to be enormous all right it's taken me three weeks to build this thing so I'm gonna to have to break it over multiple videos I reckon because it's huge however let's crack on let's get on with it so let's go over here right so the introduction ha 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 right this is not a complete list of all the signs lights etc it is guidance to help you work out what signs mean when driving with examples and helpful hints as we go it also helps you pass the UK driving theory test I've looked at theory questions highway code know your traffic signs driving the essential skills as I mentioned the answers to some of the questions don't even appear in these books so I've scoured the internet as well you are welcome I want you to read these documents please so you must read the highway code and the know your traffic signs good tip for you you get a free PDF of know your traffic signs if you go to the uh, government website and search for know your traffic signs you can download the whole thing it's free why not and then you can PDF it um, and then you can even get speechly I think it is uh, which will read the document to you bargain right let's learn basic shapes circles are orders you must or must not do something warnings are triangles careful something you need to be aware of ahead okay and then you've got rectangles which are information ie directions to a place that sort of thing and this is how you remember it so you've got o for order the a in warning or i for inform that's how i remember it anyway general rules when you're doing your road signs you read road signs from a bottom to top and then from left to right in your instance okay um, that is left yes good okay you've got up arrows which mean going ahead all right or forwards you've got down arrows which mean going that way going behind you uh, and you've got left obviously and right okay so bottom to top so here we're on the main road uh, with a side road joining us so I'd be driving along a dual carriageway in this instance or motorway this is blue uh, and then you've got a road coming on now this lane goes round a corner and becomes the left lane of three lanes whereas this one would have a giveaway line he's supposed to merge with people into the middle lane that's the idea and here we're in the side road joining the main road all right so again the left hand lane just goes round. you don't have to worry about merging with that lot because you become your own individual lane and this one you're going to have to merge with those guys uh, as we show here we're approaching from here so we're coming up from the bottom uh, they need to wash this road sign frankly it's terrible so you would be coming up here because it's the black line that touches the bottom of the sign just like here and here um, so to go to Farnborough we would go a left and then ahead so you'd come up here left and then that would be ahead second exit there because that's the first exit okay so you, this the black line at the bottom is where you come from 
So left to right, so here we go. So if you saw this road sign, you'd read it from left to right. So it's showing that's a steep hill downwards and that one's a steep upward hill or incline. Arrows. That obviously means ahead and behind. So we've got traffic going ahead behind and this one is going left to right. So traffic traveling in both directions across our path because it's going from left to right across in front of us. Single or dual carriageway. Now this is really common, okay? Uh, that people get this wrong. So I wanted to put it in right at the beginning to sort this all out because you'll be coming back to this. A carriageway is defined as a strip of tarmac not the number of lanes on that tarmac. Most people think it's lanes, it's got nothing to do with lanes. So a single carriageway is one strip of tarmac um, and there's only paint is separating us from oncoming traffic. So like the white line down the middle of the road. Okay, and the number of lanes is not important. Dual carriageways are two strips of tarmac. Anything more substantial than paint separating traffic is the uh, point okay because if it's paint obviously we're on the same bit of tar tarmac but if you've got a grass verge crash barrier you name it then there are two strips of tarmac because there's a grass verge between the two of them um, and so therefore there are two carriageways dual carriageways and so um, that's how you find it and the number of lanes again is not important here is a single carriageway for you so we've got one strip of tarmac, see it goes from here all the way across to there, only paint separating traffic. So we could crash into oncoming traffic, it's very easy to get there, right? A uh, number of lanes not important. So here we've got one going that way, one this way. Here we've got two going that way and one coming this way. Here one and one and one and one, but with a thick bit of paint in the middle. They're all single carriageways. Dual carriageways, two strips of tarmac. So you've got one here and one over here, one here, one over there, one here, one there, one here, one there. And anything more substantial than paint is separating the traffic. So I've got this crash barrier here, grass verge barriers, just grass, but it makes two strips of tarmac. And again, the number of lanes not important. We've got two, two, one, two, uh, one, one, two, two. It doesn't really matter any number. Okay, and a carriageway means tarmac strips, not lanes. So it's the fact that you've got one of these and you've got one of these. That makes it a dual carriageway. Just want to clarify that because loads of people get that wrong. Okay, general rules. Thickness of a line. Thick lines are where the road goes. Small lines mean a side road. So road follows round to the right, but there's also a side road on the left. You can also get them on the inside, like here. T junction, this looks like a T, uh, where the main road turns left, but there's also a side road on the right. So the road would go up here around the corner and then you've got a road over there. Here's your road sign in action that we just talked about. Uh, a T junction where the road goes left, but there's also a side road. There it is. So as you can see, because it's the thick line, the road just follows round. And the thin line means it's a new road, but it's just a side road. It's a minor road relative to our major one. And then, of course, you've got your chevrons here, which are sharp turn to the left, as we can see here. So when you're driving at night time, you can see where the road goes. Thicker line also implies carriageway. Thin line implies lane. Right, so it is difficult to see unless the signs are side by side. But here we have an end of dual carriageway sign. And notice that that line is thicker than this one here. The road narrows on the right. It could be flipped round, it could be drawn the other way um, if it was reversed, okay? And a road narrows on both sides. That's what that one's coming up with. There you go, road narrows on the left, which is the alternative to that one. Uh, and you would often see that one commonly next to the roadworks sign. Okay, so therefore, as an example, there are roadworks because they're fixing water pipes, so the pavement is shut and therefore the road is narrower. Uh, thick the line continues. So here's your end of dual carriageway sign, as we can see here. I don't know why they put a four on it, that's beyond me. Um, but here's your sign there, because we've got a dual carriageway here, but here we have a single carriageway, you see, because we're only separated by paint. Um, notice hiding in the trees there, we have the two-way traffic ahead. It reminds you that you've now gone from a road which was 
all traffic was traveling in one direction to a road where we got two lots of traffic but i'll come to that direction signs all right colors of a background equals type so blue as we got up here they are typically your motorway sign green is your primary a road i.e a dual carriageway white is a non primary road so that's going to be a roads b roads the stuff that goes around towns that sort of thing and then you've got brown our tourist attractions because they're just a bitch well never mind right here we go still on the type so here we have countdown markers okay so here we've got 300 200 100 yards um to a deceleration rate because it's blue you're on a motorway and the only things you get at the end of a motorway are going to be a slip road off it could be sometimes if you had a motorway that came to a roundabout which is rare they will normally turn a motorway into a dual carriageway and then the dual carriageway into a roundabout so these would typically be for your exits off thinking about it um, so exit of a motorway there you go a red and white now these are again 300 200 100 yards um, and they're a countdown to a level crossing so if you get red on white that's for level crossing so you've got a choo-choo train hiding around the corner All right. um, it's not necessarily 100 yards but it's basically a, your countdown mark all right uh, and remember they're only going to put the post up where they can so you don't whip out a ruler just so you know a yard is 93 meters so as far as learning to drive is concerned you could think of a yard as meters i mean who cares seven meters that's only the length of two cars isn't it so if i'm driving up to something and it's 100 yards or 100 meters away i really don't care so you could think of it as meters but officially it is a yards all right green okay so as we've already established green is a primary a road or dual carriageway um, and these are a countdown markers to your deceleration lane typically 100 yards they may be used to a roundabout as i said earlier on um, and on a non-primary road i.e the one outside my house uh, then you're going to get um, black on white can be used on non-primary roads there you go so at the bottom there it says on non-primary roads the bars are black and white now here this is near my house actually uh, just so you know right this is 300 yards to a 30 sign you are not in the 30 sign it's counting you down to a 30 then here we've got 200 yards to a 30 mile an hour zone 100 yards to a or 30 mile an hour zone and here is the 30 sign so they will give you countdown markers and they'll go and put whatever they're counting you down to above it I have seen it previously there's some in Finch Hampstead area where this 30 sign is actually greyed out so it's not in a red circle so there are different ways of doing it right um, ring roads just want to highlight this um, so this one's in Reading had to dig around for that one uh, so that's a black and white i.e. non a primary road this is your old style a road which was that in Farber actually uh, and you've got this is the official sign now of a primary a road ring road all right for your information a ring road is a single or multiple roads that together create a loop that goes around something reading and basingstoke have ring roads um, that go around the town center okay and of course the m25 is a perfect example of a um, ring road because it goes all the way around london right blue signs blue signs are used for a motorway directions as we can see here and mandatory instructions like go left one-way street etc okay um, but if you're seeing them in rectangles like that uh, with place on then you're going to be on a motorway um, and notice that this is round and so an order you must go ahead it's a positive action remember blue ones are positive so you must go ahead here uh, and this is rectangular so it's information so that is telling you that the road goes ahead so great um, we you know 
you're in a one-way street so well, I'm not expecting traffic and driving at me whereas a round one that's telling me I have to go ahead at whatever I am at like on these traffic lights here this traffic light is for people who are going ahead this traffic light is for going um, right so when that turns green you must turn right that's what these signs are saying to you so circles are instructions that you must do something uh, if they're blue uh, and the rectangles are information that you are in a street that goes in that one direction you have unique signs so there's some unique shapes you've got this one which is your give way and your stop sign uh, and they are found at junctions when you come to the end of a road on the approach to the road sometimes it will be difficult to see them and so therefore you yeah, will put these signs up and there's your empty downward pointing triangle downward pointing triangle remember uh, and it will put a I can't remember what they're called plaque plate plates they call them plates they will put a plate underneath that will tell you what you are approaching and how far away it is okay and the reason it's a unique shape is that if it's covered in snow you still know that there's a giveaway or a stop sign in front of you uh, you will often be asked that question in the theory test so therefore make sure you know that downward pointing triangles are giveaways and and um, octagon octagons are just counting how many sides there were there. the octagon is a stop sign right here we go is the giveaway so it's found at junctions also see the triangle on the, in the floor it means give way right a lot of people think it's an arrow but it's not it's being give way and the double broken white line at the end of the road two lines mean exit one line means entrance so like here we've got two white lines going across the entire road uh, which means we're at the end of a one-way street in fact we've got no entry signs there saying that we can't go stop signs found at junctions with poor visibility so you're at a junction there could well have been many crashes around here it could be that we can't see what's coming around the corner uh, also notice you have stop written on the floor and a solid white line all right this is on a driving test make sure you are aware of this it is illegal to not stop at a stop line and an excellent way to fail your driving test okay order signs so a red circle you must not do something so here you must not go faster than 40 miles per hour i.e the maximum speed is 40. here you must not go before oncoming traffic uh, because oncoming traffic has priority it says i here give way to oncoming vehicles the red arrow means lower priorities so this one means the people going ahead have lower priority than the black one that is coming at us and at a quick glance as you were driving up the road because you've got a red circle you know oh i'm not allowed to go so you immediately know that you have lower priorities than the other people just like this sign means no overtaking so the red circle means you must not and the red car shows where you're not allowed to put your car i.e you're not allowed to overtake so it says you must not and you must not put it there so therefore don't go around that one blue circles you must or are allowed okay so you must go 30 miles per hour or more i'll come to that in a minute i.e this is the minimum speed okay and this one is saying you can pass either side of an island uh well you're probably in a one-way street therefore so you've got a, an island in the middle of the road and you can go to the left or the right to get to the same place so here's an example you must go 10 miles an hour or faster but no faster than 40. one-way street you can go either side of the island so this is actually Basingstoke and this is your one-way street so to get down to this part of the road you can go either side of this island and that is why they have that sign there warning signs okay warning signs are upward pointing triangles notice different from the giveaway sign which is a downward pointing triangle warning there are roadworks ahead warning falling rocks ahead now I want you to think about this right part of the theory test 
or studying for the theory test is not just learning the road sign. You've got to also think about why is it there? What's going on? What scenario would I be in? That sort of thing. So let's have a think here. Warning signs are to alert you to a new situation. Why warn you about something you already know about? Okay, if you were covered in rocks, you don't need a sign telling you that there are falling rocks. But if you weren't being covered in rocks, you might want to be warned that you're going into an area where a rock might fall at you. So in the theory test, if they ask you about a warning sign, you can't be in that situation presently, but you are approaching it. This will help you work out what the possible answers will be. Okay, example. This question pops up in the theory test, so you better know this one. Right now, look at that road sign, okay? That's two-way traffic from left to right. Okay, fine. If I was already in a two-way road, I wouldn't need warning about another one, would I? Because if I've got cars coming at me, I would expect them to be in both directions in the new road. So therefore, if I'm being warned that there's traffic doing that, I can't be in that situation. And therefore, I must be in a one-way street. So what this is actually telling me is this is a two-way road crosses a one-way street. Do you see what I mean? So don't just look at that and go, oh, warning two-way traffic. You've got to think, well, why would I be warned about that? If I'm being warned about two-way traffic, I can't be in two-way traffic, therefore I must be in a one-way street. And it goes across my path, so therefore I must be coming to the end of a road, so I would also expect a giveaway sign or something like that. Just like this. God, it's like I planned it. Right. So two-way traffic crosses a one-way street. Notice you use the right-hand lane to turn right here. Because you're in a one-way street, the only reason we leave the right-hand lane free normally is because we would have oncoming traffic. But in a one-way street, there shouldn't be any oncoming traffic. Therefore, you use the right-hand lane to turn right, the left to turn left, and so on. And you just follow what the arrows say. This is an old test route that they used to come out, and lots of people failed their driving test for coming out of here on the wrong side of the road, turning right from the left. Make sure you know what you're driving on. Here's your road signs warning you of all of that. Right, this, oh it's a good one, this one gets people. It's a warning of a two-way road ahead. Okay, so if I was already in a two-way road, I wouldn't need warning about another one, uh, therefore I can't be in a two-way road. So logically, if I see this sign, I must be in a one-way road or about to leave one. But there's more to this. Here, we have a dual carriageway. Um, so you can overtake cars when you catch them, all right? But at night, it might look like this. So if you imagine, if I go back to it, imagine this road here is still over here, but it's not lit. So we've only seeing, oops, we're only seeing this one, all right? Uh, so you still overtake cars because it's the same as that, all right? Fine, um, but it's difficult to see the other side of the road. Now the dual carriageway ends at this roundabout. Notice the end of dual carriageway sign that we've got here. All right, and we're gonna go ahead at the roundabout over there where that lorry is. This is the new road. Uh, but at night, it might look exactly the same as the other one. So you might be tempted to still overtake um, when you catch a car, except now it is a two-way road. So there could well be oncoming traffic, All right? Now, the reason we say this, or why we put these signs up is because tired people can easily miss the obvious okay if they miss it they could be oncoming traffic um, cars then they could be in a crash couldn't they right so they need reminding that their situation has changed so don't just think about road signs as here and now think about a road sign is used in all weather conditions it could be foggy sunny snowy whatever it could be nighttime daytime whenever dusk so think of the different scenarios when that road sign might be called into action and that will help you think oh okay well that's why they've done that um, and the road that we went into earlier on here's the actual sign after leaving the roundabout it warns you of two-way traffic here and then we're going into a 50 all right 